All right, good morning. Um, today I am working on uh, your notes for Fed, Anti-Federal, Federalists. Um, you will find this under Topic 7, and you need to um, open these, and then remember to save them to your government notes or your government folder. Okay, so once you open those, they're going to look like this. I'm going to find them there, and then you will find the, them, uh, they will look something like this. So, Struggle for Ratification is the title there. Okay. So, let me get rid of that. And get rid of this, and there we go. All right, so um, the Struggle for Ratification came um, as a result of a real conflict over the writing of the Constitution. And if you remember, at the end of the Constitution, there required only nine um, states to agree to the ratification of this um, new document as the new form of government. Um, so they carted out this new document and right away they are having issues because um, there is a group, um, there are many who are a little unhappy because their job originally was to fix the Articles of the, Con the Confederation. Instead, what they came up with was a new, whole new document called the Constitution. And this ticked off a few people. Um, in particular, a group call, well, that will be called Anti-Federalists because they were against the Constitution, and then the Federalists who were for the Constitution. The Federalists will in fact write papers, as will the Anti-Federalists, um, trying to um, promote the document, uh, in the case of the Anti-Federalists, to explain why the document isn't a good one. But out of this whole thing came an important, very important thing, and of course that was the Bill of Rights. So we're going to see how this process um, moved forward and eventually um, from it we will get the Bill of Rights. So here are our targets. Please note them. Uh, the Federalist Papers and the Anti-Federalist Papers frame the national debate over the basic principles of government encompassed by the Constitution. And then we're going to discuss these key principles of the proposed new government. So there were, um, at the heart of this, there were a lot of concerns that this Constitution was giving too much power to the national government. So we're going to look how this all happened. All right, now, you don't need to write every single thing down. Pay attention to what your notes are asking, and then you should be okay. Um, if you'll note here, the first few things I want to talk about is, is just some basic information. After the Constitution was signed, uh, the fight of ratification began, and I told you that. And we already said that only 9 out of 13 states had to ratify the Constitution before it would go into effect. But got a lot of concerns and a lot of people not happy, and so two factions um, or opposing groups uh, emerge, and they are known as the Federalists and the Anti-Federalists. And I already said this, the Federalists will support the Constitution, the Anti-Federalists will oppose it. And these guys are going to write um, as a means to get their viewpoint out. They're going to do a lot of writing in newspapers, magazines, and pamphlets. They didn't have the um, luxury of an internet or a telephone or so on. If they were going to get their views out, they had to do it by the written word. All right. So you have, um, and you, if you would go back, let me go ahead and pull that back up. Um, if you do not already have it, you will um, need to print off this worksheet. Now, if you cannot print it off, come see me and I will uh, print it or I'll give you a copy of it. It looks something like this. Let me bring it over so you can see. It looks something like this. And what you'll need to do is you'll fill in, as I go over this, you'll fill in each of the boxes. All right, so let's go back to the notes. All right, so as we're looking through here, we're looking at the ideology, and, and we're going to look at 
the four main issues the Federalists and the Anti-Federalists have with the Constitution begins with this. The Federalists supported removing some powers from the states and giving more power to the national government. That was a big no-no as far as the Anti-Federalists were concerned. They wanted important political powers to remain with the states. They saw the states as being pretty much independent of a national government. And of course, that was the problem, a major problem with the Articles of Confederation. But they didn't want to see that go away. So that became an issue. Then the next issue, the Federalists favored dividing the powers among different branches. So they, if you remember, the Constitution established three branches of government. The Anti-Federalists were against that. They wanted the legislative branch to have more power than an executive branch. They did not see or want the opportunity for the executive branch to become too powerful. And that leads us right into the next issue that the Federalists and the Anti-Federalists had. And the, they, the Federalists proposed a single person to lead the executive branch. And of course, we know that as the president today. But the Anti-Federalists feared a strong executive that might become a king or a tyrant. They'd already been through that. They didn't want to go anywhere near it again. But with the idea of an executive branch, they feared that that president, as he will become, or will eventually become known as, they feared that that would, could possibly come this situation. And then the last one we have here is they believe, the Federalists believe the Constitution did not need a Bill of Rights. And the Anti-Federalists felt strongly that they didn't think the Constitution really um, protected the individual. And they felt that it was extremely important that there was some sort of document or addition to the Constitution that in fact was a Bill of Rights, rights to the individual. So the Federalists felt strongly about adding that to the Constitution. So those are the four main ideologies of this. And if you understand and have this, you've got a lot of what the issue with ratification was. So let's go a little further and find out some additional stuff. Okay, let me get this all pulled up. All right. Now, of course, um, this is kind of a review, but we're going to go over it again. Um, we already understand the two factions, and um, now we're looking at the arguments made by the Anti-Federalists. Um, first one, well, first of all, you need to know they were led by Thomas Jefferson, um, and small landowners believe the nation's future rested in agriculture. And this is a southern attitude. Most of the, the issue laid with the southerners. They did not like the um, the idea that the states were going to lose con could lose some power. So here are the arguments that were made, and these this is part of your notes. Um, the Constitutional Convention went beyond what they were charged to do, and for the Southerners or the Interferers, they thought that was illegal and even treasonous. And of course, that's a big deal. They also felt a, felt a strong national government would destroy states' rights, and for them. That was a huge issue. So, um, oops, sorry, let me pull it back. There you go. Um, then the next one was they saw that with the beginning of the executive branch, excuse me, that the executive branch had too much power. And they saw it, re it resembled a monarchy. And, of course, the last thing was a Bill of Rights. So that was at the heart of the Anti-Federalists. For the Federalists, um, they will argue, let me get the whole thing in there, there we go. They will argue that the new nation needed an effective national government to handle a nation's economy, its monetary system, promote justice, and to promote individual liberty. And if you are using common sense, you can see that the Federalists then, if the Anti-Federalists were Southerners, the Federalists tended to be Northerners. And the northern part of the country was very much an, uh, a um, small business, businesses, that sort of thing. And so the economy and the monetary system 
was very important, very important. So the Federalists are going to, uh, they took this name because they believed in the idea of federalism. And we have talked about that many times, so we're just doing a review here. So federalism is when the uh, government is, power is divided between the states and the central authority. But the central authority, meaning the national government, outweighs the authority of the states. Again, you can see the issue the Anti-Federalists had. All right, so guys like Alexander Hamilton, George Washington, Ben Franklin, James Madison, um, they were for this whole thing, and they wrote a series of letters and essays called the Federalist Papers. And these Federalist Papers okay, were a series of letters um, in newspapers. And um, James Madison, probably, of the, of the three that you see there, Alexander Hamilton, James Madison, John Shea, James Madison was, was probably the most prolific at writing these letters. And they sent these off to the newspapers trying, trying to convince the populations, both in the North and the South, of how important this new document was, that the Articles of Confederation were failures because they didn't have the issues that the Constitution had, they had put in place in the Constitution. So again, the three reasons these were written, to influence the vote in favor of eradication and to explain the Constitution for future interpretation and then outline how the Constitution should be set up. So in all, there was about 85 letters published in between uh, 1787 and, and 1788, and they um, are the basis of, uh, and still are, the basis of how our government is run. All right, now, the Federalist Papers I'm gonna, are broke down something like this, and this is why this is important, because you can see that this is the idea behind the government and an explanation of it. So not only did this explain to the people of the day what was going on, but it also will play a role in, in the future of how people will see that the government should be run. All right, so Federalist Papers 1 through 14, and as I said, there were 85 papers written all together, but 1 through 14 stressed the importance of the union. In, the, in other words, that this should be a country that is uh, unified by this document. And then Federalist uh, 15 through 22 stressed the inadequacy of the Articles of Confederation. And we've already seen those. And then C, the Federalist Papers 23 through 36 explain the arguments for the type of government contained in the Constitution. And D, 37 through 51 explain the Republican form of government. Um, and this, is, this in particular is that future, looking at the future. Um, Federalists 52 through 83 explained uh, three branches of government, the idea of the three, and what that would mean. And finally, Federalists 84 and 85 answer questions um, of the, uh, uh, regarding the objections to the Constitution. Um, and so they took, and this was well written, they took these questions and then began to explain exactly how this whole document, the Constitution, would work. And um, that, along with the others, played a, good, a big role in their success. All right, now paper number 10, and I'm going to take a second here. I, I have not added that to your notes, but I do want you to take a second and listen to this. Um, as I said, Madison, uh, who was probably the most famous of the Federalist Papers, um, uh, writer of the Federalist Papers, uh, states that one of the strongest arguments in favor of the Constitution is the fact that it establishes a government capable of controlling the violence and damage caused by factions. And Madison just defines factions as a group of people who gather together to protect and promote their special economic interests and political opinions. Although these factions are at odds with each other, they frequently work against the public interest and infringe on the rights of others. So he's talking um, about different groups who are trying to um, 
and, and there were many different groups uh, as, as the country is formed, trying to influence how the government should work and how it should, and whether it should work at all. And so in some cases they were working against the, uh, the ability for the country to even um, form and become a strong nation, uh, or others were that, you know, basically they were saying, well, you're doing it wrong. So to continue, both supporters and opponents of the plans are concerned with the political instability produced by rival factions. The state governments have not succeeded in solving this problem. In fact, the situation is so problematic that people are disillusioned with all politicians and blame government for their problems. Consequently, a form of popular government that can deal successfully with this problem has a great deal to re recommend it. My hope is, as you're reading this, you are noticing a serious connection to today's issues with the fact that our government is shut down right now because of factions. And those factions you ought to recognize, um, and oh, there's more than just the two main ones, but the two main ones of course are the Republicans and the Democrats. And in fact, these two groups came out of these, the two groups that we're talking about here, Federalists and Anti-Federalists. All right, so it does become, um, in, in the spirit of compromise, Ferris agreed to add a Bill of Rights, which helps document be ratified. And Delaware was the first, New Hampshire was the seventh and decisive, or the ninth, I'm sorry, was the ninth and decisive. So once Dela or New Hampshire said yes, it was now law. The Constitution was our, gov our government. And uh, North Carolina became the 12th, um, and they did, that didn't happen until uh, 1789. And Rhode, Rhode Island was finally the last of the original 13, and that happened in 1790. So once the document was ratified, questions arose how to put the Constitution in practice, uh, leading to the growth of political parties. Okay, so the first party, Federalist Party, which is what we've been talking about, led by George and Alexander, believed in a strong government, supported loose interpretation of the Constitution, and believed a future of uh, future of the country rested in manufacturing and in industry, which is a lot of what we're dealing with now. Okay. The Democratic Republicans then led by Thomas Jefferson and James Madison. And this is, this was the anti, um, no, I'm sorry, which was the Federalist, I'm saying that wrong. This was the Anti-Federalist, sorry, Anti-Federalist. They were led by Thomas Jefferson and James Madison, believed in states' rights, uh, won a strict interpretation of the Constitution, and finally believed that the future of the nation rested with agriculture. All right, so let's sum it up. Federalists can be said to have won the overall debate on the basic principles of government with the ratification of the Constitution. The Anti-Federalists, however, did achieve some success with the limitations on government embraced by the Bill of Rights. Okay, so that um, finishes up, well, finishes up what we're going to talk about right now. The, um, we will begin to work, look at the Bill of Rights next. But what I need for you to do is to go ahead and finish up you, these notes and make sure you upload them to the proper location. All right, if you have any questions, uh, come see me.